I present to you, teachers and student, students, this magnificent wind instrument. Good morning, good afternoon, eighth graders. Uh, I am here to make you a uh, short video of how to make an anemometer, which measures uh, wind speed. And um, it took me about 30 minutes or so to, to make this. And there were a few tricks. You have the instructions in the materials in Google Classrooms, but it was quite tricky uh, for a few reasons. Um, now, the materials that you'll need are a pencil with an eraser still in it. You will need one, two, three, four, five three ounce plastic cups, which I also provided to you along with the pencil. And you will need a push pin, two straws, and some tape to hold everything, everything together. Now the instructions begin with telling you to make a hole about a half inch from the tip of four different, about the, the top, the drinking end, of four different cups. And the best way to do that is with a single hole punch. I didn't have a single hole punch at home, so I used some of the materials that I had. And what I used was actually the tip of the pin to put a little hole in it, the push pin, thumbtack. And I put a little hole about a half inch um, down in the cup. And then I took my sharp knife here and slowly, as to not tear the cups, I slowly turned it and dug it further and further to make the hole as round as possible. There was one or two cups that I slipped it in and it kind of made a slit instead of a hole, but, um, but it still worked. And I did put, give everybody one extra cup in your, in your packets in case you do completely mess up but, and that's okay. So we're just going to do our best here. So you can see right now as the wind is blowing, it is beginning to But to make this, you will, again, you will make a hole one half inch from each rim of, of, of one of the cups. The fourth, uh, the fifth cup, you will actually make a hole in the bottom. Now the hole in the bottom needs to be bigger than the pencil. So it needs to be able to move freely and it's not tight there. After you make all of the holes, you'll make, um, two more holes at the top of the cup one hole a quarter inch from the rim on the opposite side another quarter inch from the rim then two more one here which is a half inch from the drinking end and on the opposite side another half inch from the drinking end that way the two straws when they cross are not directly in the same path. One is a little bit higher and one is a little bit lower than the other one. After that, you will take the straw, insert it through the bottom of that center cup. And the straw? I'm sorry, the, <laughs> the, uh, the pencil and insert it to the bottom. You'll insert the straws, make a T across, and the push pin will go through both straws and into the eraser end of the pencil. Now, when you do that, you want, there's a couple tricks. One, um, one um, is, you, first of all, you have to tape the cups to the straw. And when you tape the cups to the straw, you insert the straw on each end about a half inch in. And when you tape each side, it, it, this is where it gets tricky. When you tape each cup to the straw and you bend the straw back about a half inch you need to adjust the cups so that they are number one facing opposite directions as you can see this cup is facing that way and this cup is facing towards me and also you also want the cups to be even so they are even and then the same thing with the opposite cups okay they will be a little bit lower or a little bit higher but the cups essentially you want to uh, adjust. This took several adjustments for me to make sure that they were centered and this, this, both all the cups are about the same distance from the center of the cup here. And uh, then also take, took several adjustments to make sure that these cups were uh, basically perpendicular to the ground. 
So once you've made this, it should flow freely. And there's two ways to, to catch the wind, okay? One, Mister. one is if the pin is able to move freely at the top. Okay, if that pin is tight in the top and it's not moving and it's not spinning at all, you will have to cup your hand to make sure that when you insert this into your hand, it's loose and can freely and can freely spin. Finally, you will see an X that I made on one of the cups. That X is to indicate the cup that you need to count every time it passes. So in the directions, there is a chart that gives a wind speed um, comparison and the, the number of X's, num the number of times that the X passes you and you count after one minute will correlate to a certain wind speed. So you can look at that chart and determine the wind speed as you use your anemometer each day for this, for this weather unit. Um, another way to measure unit uh, there is a scale called the Beaufort wind scale and what you can do is you can look at that Beaufort wind, wind scale that I had sent you and you can compare that wind scale to what you get here. It, it will ask you to look at flags, look at the trees, the tips of trees uh, and look at uh, different things that you might see around your yard and around your, and around your neighborhood. Um, so there you go, there you have it. This is an anemometer that helps you to measure wind speed. As you can see, the wind is blowing here, and I'm counting the X's for one minute. We'll give you an average wind speed. Right now it's gusty, so we have some gusting wind and then some times of no wind. So it'll give you an average wind speed. Compare that to the Beaufort scale, and there you have it, measuring your uh, wind speeds. Um, do this each day throughout the weather unit. Thanks, 8th grade.